Hello there everybody, today we are going to be taking on quite the unique career simulation. I will be creating a player on NHL 23 who really wants to pass the puck, but despite his desire to feed the boys, simply cannot do it. This player will be a playmaker, of course, with a full pass bias in the shot pass bias category, and will have absolutely no passing abilities or X factors. So without further ado, let's find out how the career of this medium franchise playmaker that cannot pass will go. Bedsy is supposed to go first overall and I could have just assigned him. You know, he has been drafted in real life, but look who got the first overall pick anyway. It is Chicago. I'm just gonna show you the retiring class of every year just for fun so you can see what's going on and who retired with what. Bedard does go first overall, and Johnny Playmaker at number two goes to the jackets that are blue in color. And as you can see there, he's a playmaker with absolutely no passing ability. At 83 overall, he will start on the third line of the blue jackets, where Rensky and Bogfist are the top defensive pair, and they got Tristan Jari in net, backed up by Elvis. Signs the entry-level deal, and in their first season with Johnny Playmaker, they just miss out on the playoffs, having 90 points, and the team above them with 91. Not a great first year, as he puts up 18, and I will be showing the playoff tree as well, just for funsies. Eric Stahl is the top retiring player, with 1,054 points. In year three, Bertuzzi and Texier will be the line mates of Johnny Playmaker, who has now found himself on the second line, of the Columbus roster. Still can't pass though. Got 43 passing and a half a star in that first category, but the team finishes second in the entire league with 111 points. Still not a great season from Johnny, who puts up 15, but the Blue Jackets do go in the first round to the Washington Capitals. It will be Zach Parise at the top of this year's retirement list. Johnny at 86 overall will be on the third line again, for Columbus here. Demoted, unfortunately, but I mean he can't pass, so there's that. Jari's up to 90 overall, a boy. 45 passing, it is not going up, but the team finishes second in the league again, so despite Johnny not doing so hot, the team as a whole is succeeding. We don't see a lot of playoff contribution from Mr. Playmaker either. Two points in six games this year, which I guess isn't terrible. The Buffalo Sabres would be the demise of Columbus this season. And Pavelski, the big tipper, just shy of 1,200 points. That first line looks insane. But now we've got Marchenko and Texier playing with our lad here that we are simulating. Signs a new deal. Only one year at about 5.5. They finished first in the Metro with 110 points. Only 26 points, however, will come from Johnny playing the full 82 games. Did get 26 playoff games in, though, with 10 points, and they win a Stanley Cup. How about that? Beating out the Calgary Flames in seven. Absolutely ridiculous. We simulate some players that are nuts, and sometimes they never win cups. And here we are with Johnny Playmaker, who gets another one-year 5.5 deal, and he takes the pressure off early, winning in year five. So he's already got that under his belt. He also has 24 points in 77 games this season under his belt. Not great. But Columbus would miss out on the playoffs after winning the Stanley Cup. Nick Backstrom, 1,400 points. How you doing? Playmaker will be with Zetterland. <laughs> For some reason, I thought I was saying his player type. I don't know what just registered in my brain there, but I forgot that I named him Playmaker. So that really tripped me up. But anyway... They're back in the playoff picture, third in the Metro. We see 25 points from Johnny this year. He was a dash two. And in the playoffs, only five games played with two points. 40% for the shooting percentage, though. It's pretty good. And still 46 passing. Ugh. Disgusting. The Rangers delete them in round one, taking just five games. Attaboy, Anze. Zetterland and Texier going to be with Johnny yet again. Wierenski and Bokva is still the top pair there. Hellebuck backed up by the Mac attack. I thought I was going crazy, but they keep signing the same one-year 5.5 deal. Back out of the playoffs and a dash 13 for Johnny. So all around, not a good season whatsoever for Columbus. Steven, 
Couldn't quite get to 1500, but he was right there. Johnny now moves on over to Smashville. He's going to be playing with Eichel. Not that Eichel. And Geeky signs a two-year, $4 million contract. And the team looks pretty decent. They got Stewie in net. They would, however, miss out on the playoffs. Getting 84 points in their first season. Good enough for fifth in the Central Division. We see 29 points from Johnny, which I believe might be his highest point season yet. Anyway, Patrick Kane retires. And Playmaker is 88 overall on the fourth line. What a weird simulation. I kind of like it. It's very unexpected. The team would finish second in the league with 109 points. We do only see 12 points from Johnny, although I'm sure his time on ice wasn't great. And only five playoff games with the Predators this year. No points and a dash two. They would be rinsed by the Winnipeg Jets. And Johnny Goudreau, former teammate of Johnny Playmaker, decides to hang up the skates. Down to 83. And not even good enough to be in center anymore. <laughs> he gets pushed over to the right side. Stewie's still going to be the starting goalie. And once again, Nashville misses out on the playoffs with just 86 points. We do see 29 from Playmaker. So, you know, he seems to be doing all right here in Smashville. Keep it up. Nate Mack gets 1,618 points. And it is time to jump ship again. We are moving over to the Senators. Going to be playing with Barkov. So that should be good, right? Two years, 6.5 million. And they miss out on the playoffs. 93 points, fifth in the Atlantic Division. Can't get it done. But 35 points from Playmaker, I believe that is another new record here. The Sabres sweeping the Conference Finals and the Stanley Cup Finals. Look at them go. Larkin up at the top for this season. Barkov and Norris going to be Playmaker's line mates. We've got Sanderson and Brant Clark as the top defensive pair. Blumquist in net. The Sens do make the loss, finishing third in the Atlantic with 99 points. We see 25 from Johnny Playmaker who played six playoff games and went dash three with no points. Not great. They would be deleted by the Leafs, taking six games. And Mick Dusty decides he's done at 1831. Great career. Johnny is now moving on over to the Montreal Canadiens, where he signs a one-year $5 million contract. And he ends up getting traded to the St. Louis Blues, who finish third in the Central and do make the playoffs. He gets 31 points in 60 games, which for Johnny Playmaker, that's pretty nuts. They would be absolutely rinsed by the Predators in round one, though. Johnny's playoff career seems to be all or nothing. Either gets first rounded or wins the cup, because that's the only two scenarios we've had so far. Signs the biggest deal yet with the St. Louis Blues. Over seven AAV, three years, the team finishes fifth in the entire league. And we see just shy of 30 points from Mr. Playmaker, who puts up one goal in the playoffs. Seven games, the Seattle Kraken take them down. Back on the third line here of the St. Louis Blues, 88 overall, still cannot pass. Honestly, I mean, he did win a cup, but gotta be one of the biggest busts of all time. Second overall, he's right up there with Patrick Stefan, right? Has to be. Does put up four points in this playoff run, though. Three goals. Still losing the first round, though. Nashville has their number. Marner and Matthews retire the same year. Because, of course, they do. Still going to be on the third line of the St. Louis Blues. Going into year number 17. The team finishes third in the league with 109. And Playmaker puts up 28 points. He was a plus eight this year as well. 31 pimps. Got 22 playoff games under his belt and another Stanley Cup. So the theory continues. It is all or nothing. Lucas Raymond is up there with 1,200 points. a boy. And a healthy scratch. Johnny Playmaker signs a two-year, $2.6 million contract with the Sabres. And they decide they don't want to play him. How about that? He did end up getting put in. Played 59 games and had 19. And the Sabres did not make the playoffs this year, but the San Jose Sharks go on to win the Cup. And Clayton Keller retires up there with near 1,500 points. Now down to 82 overall. He will be on the starting lineup for the Buffalo Sabres. The squadron manages to make the playoffs, finishing fourth in the Atlantic Division. 90 points 
for them this season. Johnny puts up 25, seven goals, and was a plus eight. Only six playoff games, so the theory stays strong. One goal, and they would be taken down by the Pity Pens. And that's it. 435 points in 1,400 games for Mr. Playmaker. You know what? I guess with two cups, did a little bit better than Patrick Stefan. But still, this simulation was wild. I couldn't help but laugh, honestly, as I was checking out his stats every year because he was really good everywhere else, but he just wanted to pass and couldn't do it. There's not really much to talk about here stat-wise, but, you know, he did win two Stanley Cups. Didn't win any other trophies, but won the most important one twice. Throughout his career, he would be a part of six different teams, that being Columbus, Nashville, Ottawa, Montreal, St. Louis, and the Buffalo Sabres. And on top of that, signed 18 years worth of contracts that totaled a career earning of about 83.58 million. Not bad. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you for the suggestion. This was actually one of my favorite career sims, despite the low points. If you guys could leave a like, that would be greatly appreciated. If you do enjoy the content, you could subscribe, or you could not. I'll leave that up to you. But thank you for watching. If you have other career sim ideas or video ideas, be sure to let me know. And I will see you soon.